Good morning, friends. Actually, it's early afternoon now. Just wanted to uh, bring you greetings on a soggy and wet Monday morning to let you know that God is still at work in the lives of the people from Chapel Springs. My name's Doug Chapman. I'm the family care pastor, and I just wanted to bring you a brief devotion this morning out of Psalm, excuse me, Isaiah chapter 43. Reading from the Immerse Bible, we've been working our way through this over the last several months. Isaiah 43, beginning at verse number 1. But now, O Jacob, listen to what the Lord who created you has to say. O Lord, the one who formed you says, and I quote, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. And when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. When Isaiah brings this word to the children of Israel under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, he does two things. First of all, he reminds the children of Israel of who they are in their relationship with the Lord. Remember, the Lord who created you, the Lord who formed you, is the one who speaks. And this is the Lord who has called his people by name and declared that they are his. This is the Lord who promises, I will be with you. And when adversity comes, when you go through deep waters, when you go through rivers of difficulty, when you go through the fire of oppression, you will not drown, you will not be burned up, the flames will not consume you. And the reason that the children of Israel could have that hope was for the promise, I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. When Isaiah speaks this word to the children of Israel, he draws back into their collective consciousness. He reminds them that when they went through the Red Sea and when they crossed the Jordan River, God was with them. And that they successfully navigated those two huge difficulties, obstacles in their path. They didn't drown. They were not swept away because God had pledged to be with them. So he looked backwards to remind them of who they were and where they had been and of the Lord's faithfulness. But then Isaiah, looking forward, speaks prophetically. When you go through the fires of opposition, it'll be a few hundred years into the future, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are going through the fires of opposition when Nebuchadnezzar cast them into the fiery flames. And there's not a hint of smoke or burn damage on their clothes or their bodies at all. In fact, when Nebuchadnezzar looks into the fiery furnace, he doesn't see the three men that he threw in there, but he sees a fourth, for God is walking with them in the midst of the flame. That's the promise of God to the children of Israel. What can we learn about that as we think about what's happening to us today? When we go through the rivers of difficulty and the deep waters, when we go through the fires of opposition, God's promise is, I am with you. I call you by name, which means he knows each and every one of us. We as a people, we as a church, we as the people of the world are in a place we have truly never collectively been before. There aren't any of us who are alive who remember the last global pandemic, the 1918 Spanish flu, that killed tens of thousands of people. We've experienced a plummeting stock market, which rattles men and women's sense of safety and security. It hasn't been like this since the Great Depression. Very few are alive from that time period who remember as adults what that was like. And yet the promise that God gives his children is when you go through these things, not hypothetically if you go through them, when you go through them, you will not drown. The flood will not sweep you away. 
The flames will not set you ablaze because I, the Lord, am with you. His promise to us, Chapel Springs, that God loves you, knows you by name, cares about you in a very deep and personal way. And he has staked his own integrity, his own character, to watching over his people, protecting them, preserving them with his presence at work in their lives. And so the word of the Lord from the book of Isaiah speaks to us a message of hope. But the message continues. Look at what else God says to the children of Israel and to us today. You are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. So don't be afraid, for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from the east and the west, and I will say to the north and the south, bring my sons and daughters back to Israel, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. In the midst of all of the uncertainty that's going on in the world around us, think about what it means to know that you and I have been created for the glory of God. If we are created for God's glory, then surely God is watching over us. Surely he is at work to produce in us all that which will bring him the honor and the glory that he desires to receive from our lives. Remember, friends, he is the one who has created us. And because of the promise that we are his creation, we are precious to him, that he loves us, and that he will bring us out, we need not, even in the midst of all of the uncertainty that is going on in the world, we need not give way to a sense of fear or apprehension or anxiety or uncertainty. God is with us even in the midst of the flood, even in the midst of the rivers of difficulty, even in the midst of the fires of oppression. But it's interesting. Isaiah doesn't stop there. He continues to speak. He says, you are my witnesses, O Israel. You are my servant. And then he says, you have been chosen to know me, to believe in me, and to understand that I alone am God. What a better opportunity for us to know God, believe in him, and understand that he alone is God, than in the midst of circumstances which you and I cannot control. We cannot control coronavirus. We cannot control what the stock market does. We cannot control whether the government closes its businesses and forces small businesses to shut down. Those are decisions that are being made at much higher pay grades than yours and mine. But the promise of God is, in the midst of those circumstances, it is God's desire because he chose us. It's his desire that we would believe in him and that we would understand that he alone is our God. He alone is our rock, our source, our provider. I love what the psalmist said. Using the context of his day, he said, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Our hope is not in the military. Our hope is not in the wisdom of government. Our hope is not in the power of the economy. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. He is the maker of heaven and earth. And then Isaiah goes on to say one more thing. He says, from eternity to eternity, I am God. Obviously, Isaiah is not God. He's speaking as God's mouthpiece. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can snatch anyone out of my hand. No one can undo what I have done. Friends, think of the promise that is there, that God, from the beginning of time until the end of time, and all that went before and after that, he alone is God, and he has said, no one can snatch us out of his hand. Hold your hand up for just a moment like I am, and visualize yourself being in the hand of God. He is loving you caring for you, protecting you, and guarding you, watching over you. You are in the palm of his hand, 
and no one, and dare I say nothing, can snatch you out of the hand of God. And then Isaiah shares one more thing out of this passage. We're still in Isaiah chapter number 43. Isaiah says, this is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. And then he takes a moment to tell us who this Lord is. This is the Lord who will rescue Israel from the Babylonians. This is the Lord who is your Holy One, Israel's Creator and King. This is the Lord who opened up the Red Sea so the children of Israel could pass through on dry ground while the Egyptians were drowned. This is the Lord, Isaiah says, who now speaks. So he reminds them of the greatest moment of Israeli history, the Exodus, the deliverance. And then he says, boy, I love how the Immerse reads it to us, but forget all of that. It is nothing compared to what I am going to do. For I am about to do something new. See, I have already begun. Do you not see it? Israel staked its entire history on God's deliverance through the Red Sea. The Exodus is the pinnacle of God's deliverance of the children of Israel. And yet Isaiah says, forget about that. What he's saying is, don't expect today that God is going to deliver you in the same way that he delivered you in some previous time or place. Don't expect God to do in your life today what he did for you last year or last decade or even last century. I'm doing a new thing among you and even now it springs up. And listen to what Isaiah says God is going to do. I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. Think about how that applies to our lives today. In a spiritual sense, the world is looking more and more like a wasteland. As men and women have no hope for the future, as they have no confidence that someone supernaturally is watching over their lives, as they're left to depend on their own intelligence, their own education, their own training, their own resources, their own skill, their own network, I'm going to make a road, a path in the wilderness in the wilderness of hopelessness and despair, anxiety and apprehension, I'm creating a path. Not only that, but I am creating rivers in the dry wasteland. And friends, you and I are those paths. We are those rivers. God is using you and me in this time of uncertainty to be able to reach out to our families who don't have the hope in Jesus that we have to share with our neighbors the love and grace of God that we have that causes us not to be afraid when the stock market is plummeting and not to be afraid when the rates of coronavirus infection are going up. Why do we have that confidence? It's not because like an ostrich we've buried our head in the sand and are hoping and praying that it all goes away, but instead it is because we are known by God. I've called you by name, he said. You are mine. And with that knowledge and confidence that we belong to him, it emboldens us to be able to share with our family, with our neighbors, with our co-workers, teleworking, with the people that we're seeing at the hospital and the doctors, with the grocery store employees. Hey, there is hope and this too shall pass. God loves you. And God cares about what's going on in your life. When you go through the water, you will not drown. And the flood will not sweep you away. When you pass through the fire, you will not be burned. For I, the Lord, am with you. What a hope. What a promise. Let me pray with you today. And ask the Lord's blessing upon you and your family and your loved ones. And as we pray that... Will you join me in praying for doctors and nurses and medical personnel all across the world, hospital administrators, technicians, custodians who are sweeping the floors and sanitizing medical facilities, 
that God will use them as channels of his healing at work in their lives. Let's pray together. Father, how grateful we are for the promises in the scripture that you know us by name, that you are with us, that when we go through seasons of adversity, trials, and hardships, Isaiah described them as floods and fires. We'll not be swept away by them, we'll not be burned up by them, for you have pledged to be with us. You've chosen us. You've called us to believe in you. You choose to display your glory through us. So may we, the people of God, reflect your loving kindness in all that we say, in all that we do, and most importantly, in all that we are. We ask you to be with the families of Chapel Springs and those who are watching us by way of this broadcast. May your grace and your peace be extended to them. And we pray for the medical personnel who are working around the world diligently to bring hope and help and healing. We ask you to bless them and protect them. Keep them safe from coronavirus as they are seeking to minister to the people you love. So today, we commit ourselves to trusting in you. Let your will be done in us. Let your kingdom come through us, we pray, in the great and powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, God bless you, friends. If there's anything that we can do at Chapel Springs to help you, go to the website, click on the box on the front of the page that says, I need help, or here's a prayer request. We want to bless you, and we're in contact with you as best we can. Until we get to see you again next time face-to-face, -face, God be with you, God bless you, God keep you, God protect you. Amen.